let me jump ahead and then I'm going to come back to a question I have on spirometry. So one is um, this disconnect that you're mentioning. And one of the things that we struggle with um, at different parts of our careers, whether it was on the, the provider side or the payer side, was this early versus late diagnosis and when should the PCP be pushing the patient to someone with more COPD experience. So I'd like to get your sense of a couple of things. When should you be consulted or your co co colleagues be consulted? And why are PCPs not accurately diagnosing and resistant to doing spirometry? So, so not to load up the whole book yeah, here, but, yeah, that's a, yeah, that but is I a feel lot of like questions. those all kind of go together so, as one. So, you know, as pulmonologists, we often feel that our touch matters in almost every case. I think, um, so let's start with the easy question. In folks that have persistent sim symptoms and are getting in a more severe direction, especially when some of the more advanced therapies are indicated, I think at that point a pulmonologist has to at, at least weigh in. When the usual therapy that a, a primary care doc is used to seeing affect a patient and it's not working, then maybe something unusual is going on that a specialist may have seen more often and to get them involved. But I would even argue, even at an earlier stage of COPD, for a specialist to weigh in just once because Often patients who are diagnosed with many other things are first diagnosed with COPD because it's so common. Patients present with cough and sputum production. And so interpreting the complexities of pulmonary function testing and, and imaging sometimes can lead us in other directions. So um, a, a specialist to weigh in once if somebody has a recognized pulmonary disease. But then as far as long-term management, I think it's the more resistant, more severe patient. Uh, primary care docs are more than capable in most cases of managing these patients. Okay, Maria, from your point of view, trying to manage the system, right, and, and to, you know, referrals are part of that and, and, and medication management is part of that. You know, do, do you have any um, limitations on access to pulmonologists or is it based on certain clinical criteria or is it more open than that? It's more open. I, I think that um, certainly PCPs have the leeway to make the referral to a pulmonologist. I think sometimes there are limitations in, in your geographic area. Who is it that you can see? In rural areas, how, many, you know, how much access to a pulmonologist is there a pulmonary clinic? So those are some lim regional limitations, particularly in rural areas. I think what would be interesting is, especially now with telehealth, to have that ability to check in remotely with uh, a pulmonologist who can weigh in on um, setting the stage, and you, if you will, in terms of diagnosis, treatment approach, maybe uh, be part of an annual um, evaluation, if you will, that hopefully raises all tides, mm. including uh, what the PCP can do and is able to do and is considering. Because you're absolutely right, when a, a, in a world where you have a patient who may have four or five other comorbid conditions and you're focused on um, you know, the HEDIS, the Medicare STAR measures, A1C control, blood pressure, often you know, the checkoff box with smoking cessation and there's not enough time to address all the symptoms and the disease itself becomes important to have a multidisciplinary approach weigh in. So let me just, to be, I want to follow up on the thought if it's okay, Neil. Uh, I, I agree with what both of you guys have said, but it, it, it's complicated because most of the people who are sent to pulmonologists tend to be frequent exacerbators because they're sick that often. They're calling their doctors a lot of times. And, you know, with that constant need for attention, they're often referred. We see far less of the people who are, who are not the frequent exacerbators, but who are gradually deteriorating. And you could certainly make an argument that it would be nice to see some of those a little bit earlier on before they reach the point that they can't go from here to the, the wall without getting short of breath. Maybe there might be some things we could add. We don't see a lot of those. And, and the way your practices are set up, you might not know the answer to this question, but do you feel that a fair number of patients are self-referring or they're waiting for their PCP to say, you need more help? I, with advanced disease, yes. But with 
up to even moderate or, or early severe disease, rarely. I, and I think our resources are um, almost opposite of what they should be. The opportunity is perhaps to manage this early on, and we do have disease management programs, uh, usually led by um, nurses, case managers. Uh, but you know, as you get sicker and as you become a higher cost burden, um, that's where the tendency t is to be able to then focus on that individual, perhaps the opportunities early on to be able to control the disease and do a better job. I don't want to suggest that COPD is not a disease that can't be managed in primary care. Most of it lives in primary care. And I don't think that Frank is suggesting that we take over the management of all these people. I just think that it pr potentially provides a little bit of, uh, of additional guidance when necessary. And it would be nice not to see them at the end stages of their disease.